Sydney. It has a vast plethora of iconic creatures and monsters, from tieflings to mind flayers. However, as time progresses, some of these fascinating creatures fade into obscurity. Hi, I'm Luke of Luke Richardson, and I'm here to draw some of these obscure figures, bringing back to life some of these forgotten creatures, starting with the Caesarus. Party is weary. Long have they travelled, and hard have they fought. Your motley band consists of a few dampier, revenant, and creepy scary skeletons. It's a party of the undead, okay? An undead party. Also, there's a drowned necromancer, because why not? Dawn is about to break. The sun is rising. And as there are a few dampier around, they'd prefer to get out of the glare of the sun. Fortunately, a catacombs is nearby, a welcoming home for the undead group. Most of the party can see in the dark, while others light torches to illuminate the gloom. However, as the flames dance and cast shadows, they notice something peculiar. The catacombs appears to have been disturbed. The tombs lie in disarray, bodies displaced from their resting places. Yet strangely enough, valuable treasures remain untouched and forgotten, gathering dust. The unfearing party explores further into the tombs, and as they do, those of acute hearing begin to pick up and hear a faint, eerie, whispering sound. It's almost like the wind itself is speaking to them, guiding them, or perhaps luring them. The undead in the group are transfixed by the sound, made eerily calm by its droning sound. The drow necromancer begins to cast a spell to try and discern the identity of what is causing the noise, but as he begins, a few of his undead fellows simply stop moving altogether, a forlorn expression upon their faces. The sound was closer now, a droning sound, as if the area itself was breathing down the very halls they walked within. The necromancer's allies that still had control of their senses started to flee in terror, but those that were transfixed remain, the twitters still held in their hands. The flickering flames of the torches danced. Out of the shadows, the necromancer spied something. Something very large. Something that glinted from the light of the torches. Panicking, the necromancer did what he knew best. He prepared to raise the dead of the catacombs itself to defend him and his remaining motionless allies from whatever was lurking in the shadows. As each new undead rose up from the ground, so too did the droning sound. With each new undead, it somehow sounded more aggressive, more angry. And yet each undead that rose up merely stood motionless, useless to the necromancer. Then something happened. A a massive howling gust of wind emerged from the shadows, swiftly blowing out every torch in the room, plummeting the undead and necromancer into the darkness. <coughs> a commotion could be heard. Something was attacking the undead, wiping him out one by one. In a desperate attempt to regain control, the necromancer swiftly snapped up one of the torches, expelling a small amount of magic to light it up once more. The flames lit up the room. There is an undead, who are all once more fully dead. The last of the necromancer's allies had either been killed or fled amidst the chaos. And then the necromancer's gaze fell upon a terrifying sight. The Susurus, standing tall and menacing, far taller than that of a human. It loomed over him, a hulking beast resembling a headless gorilla with shimmering glass-like skin, holes dotted its body, drawing in and exhaling air. It was the source of the droning sound, and it now filled the room with its eerie presence. A single forceful snort of air shot out from the Susurus, extinguishing the annoying torch out once and for all. The dead must remain dead. So, what exactly is the Susurus? It first appeared in Dwight Dwarf issue 9, and was present in the first edition of D&D, all the way up to the third edition. It is also known as the Headless Droning Ape, or Singing Ape. Its main visual characteristics is of a headless quadruple figure of an almost humanoid ape-like shape. Its body is littered with small gaps that allow it to suck in air and create a distinctive droning song. The catch about this creature is that its song pacifies the undead, and it can even stun non-undead creatures too. While the creature is mostly peaceful, it becomes agitated around the undead and those that wield flame. It definitely seems like this creature has a hatred for the undead, as even its claws are able to shed incorporeal undead as if they were made of living flesh. But I don't think there was necessarily any explanation for why it dislikes fire. It could be due to the fire consuming oxygen, which it perhaps also relies upon for its song. Maybe? From my research into this creature using the Forgotten Realms wiki, yeah, I used a wiki, so sue me, and from some other drawings of it, there seem to be some suggestions that the creature is plant like, as if it's made of many pieces of bamboo hewn together to form all those holes. But if I'm honest, I wanted to avoid this as I have a little bit of, um, how is it pronounced? Uh, trypophobia? Trypophobia.
I suggest you don't Google that, honestly. Instead, I focused on one small passage that I found, where it was described that others claimed that Tesuri appeared to be covered in shards of glass, which encircled the hole that riddled their bodies, and also any creature that attacked the Sisyphus with handheld weapons, teeth, or claws would cut itself on the aberration's jagged glass-like skin. So I took this to the extreme and made the creature completely made of glass, and I think this makes it pretty unique and a bit different, honestly. There aren't many creatures I know in fantasy that are made purely of just glass. So in conclusion, if you enjoyed this video, I suggest you have a gander at some of my other videos. I've done quite a few pieces of fan art videos which you can check out. My most popular is probably the drawing that I've done of Hell of a Boss characters in my own more realistic art style, but I'd also love for more suggestions of what to draw next. If you reckon I should draw more Dungeons and Dragons inspired pieces, then I'd love to hear it. Maybe you know of a really obscure D&D monster or creature that you would love to see in my style. If you do, let me know in the comments. So on that note, that is all I have for today, and I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe and follow me on Instagram for all the latest news. Alright, that's it. I'm ending the video now.